I'm Owen Biglen. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, I'm going to call this one, uh, The Only Person in Your Way is You. It's Saturday, so let's do one of my famous motivational blogs here to help you guys stay the course. The positive affirmation I like to pump out here. I still enjoy getting it from a variety of sources as well. Keeps you on track. So, you know, I'm going to uh, get a, I forgot an interesting post here that I got off Twitter. Now, I follow some very uh, eclectic mix of people on Twitter. I only follow a couple hundred people on there, 175 or so, uh, from all walks of life. Uh, a lot of athletes on there, uh, a lot of people from the fitness industry, bodybuilders, power lifters, CrossFit guys, uh, nutritionists, um, and then a lot of business stuff in there as well. I got some cr crazy uh, people on there that I follow. Some of them you'd call alpha males. They've got some, uh, you know, but I enjoy following some of these guys. I mean, some of the stuff I don't agree with 100% on all of it, but it's a lot of good motivational stuff on staying positive. Nobody is going to save you except you. You're the only person that uh, you can really rely on in life. Uh, you know, keep your head down, work hard, and good things will happen. And that's the kind of stuff that I've always, you know, like to get into my system. Because there's so much of this negative, you know, it's not your fault. Everybody gets a participation ribbon type stuff out there that I do not like. I don't want anything to do with any of that stuff. That's just not the way I was brought up. I take, uh, you know, I take full control of my destiny and you guys should too. So this was a tweet that a guy put out. This guy is a former former special forces guy uh, who has a couple of young sons. And it was kind of, I thought it was kind of timely because I've talked, gone back and forth on this a little bit on YouTube with people. You know, it's tough to buy a home right now for young people and it absolutely is. Prices are substantially higher than what they were 20 or 25 years ago. But of course, my argument is it's just as easy today if you're looking in the right places and you're, you're working in the right places. The prices are way up, but the opportunities are tenfold what they were just 10 or 15 years ago, especially when you're harnessing passive income flows, multiple income streams via technology. So this guy, I think he was either a Green Beret or a, or a, a Navy SEAL. So he's you know, a pretty self-motivated guy, as you can imagine. He's got a couple of young sons and he tweeted out here, 10 or 15 thing, 10 things here that he's been kind of instilling in his kids at a young age. And I agree with all of these. I'm going to list them off here. Many of these you've already heard from me over the years. I mean, this is where I get this stuff from. This stuff never changes. It's been around for 25 years, these rules that this guy is trying to impart on his young kids. This is what my dad was imparting on me 30 and 35 years ago. This is what the guys that I used to hang out with in the gyms and golds and down in Venice, California, some of the, the guys there that would impart these kind of messages too. You just start absorbing this stuff and it becomes you. So I'm going to list a bunch of them off here. Some of them I might comment on a little bit. Others I'm just going to rattle off. I don't want to keep it too long here for Saturday you know, as I go on for 20 minutes. So here's the list of, of things that he's, he, he's teaching his kids right now. Um, your freedom begins the day that you realize nobody is coming to save you. <laughs> oh man, this one I've been pounding for how many years now? That the government's not your friend. Nobody's going to come and coddle you in any way in life. I know you want housing to come back to what the average wage earner earns here. And I've got news for you. The cavalry is not on the way. It's never going to happen. As a matter of fact, the government has all already thrown everything but the kitchen sink to try and slow this housing market a little bit. You know, is it fair? I know a lot of people, they were born and raised in Vancouver. They feel entitled to buy a home here. You know, that's up for debate. But what I'm trying to give you is the tough love here, that the toothpaste is not going to go back in the tube. We're not going to go back to $250,000 detached homes and $125,000 condos in Yaletown. That is never going to happen. It's gone. But what I say, often said here, is all hope is not lost. You can still do it. I know because I'm selling 40, 50 homes a year, many of them to young people with no help from mom and dad that have buckled down and have taken this. That they realized a long time ago, maybe their parents taught them this, like mine did, and some of my mentors, that nobody's going to come and save you here. You've got to do the mirror test, as I call it. 
Number two, self-discipline unlocks the world. Yeah, again, I've pounded home this one too. Pay yourself first. You're going to have to work. Nothing's going to be given to you. You've got to have the discipline, the motivation, the op optimistic mindset. You need enthusiasm with things that you're going to do, go through life. Doesn't mean you know that everything is sunshine and roses. I do some complaining from time to time. You could ask my wife. I'll complain a little bit about the traffic or this or that. Everybody does. Even Pete Carroll and the most positive guy I've ever seen, a guy like Russell Wilson, I'm sure does some complaining from time to time. But he has the self-discipline. He knows a long time ago that if it is to be, it's up to me, and I'm going to have the discipline and, and set a, a game plan and then execute on it. And guess what? You're going to have a lot of good days and you're going to have some bad, terrible days and setbacks. The winners just dust themselves off, realize it is just part of the journey and keep moving forward. Leaders don't ask for permission. Yeah, you just take the ball in, in your control and move with it. You know, you I've talked about this a few times before. You assess the landscape. You know, out there right now, there are so many opportunities. Uh, you know, I can see if I wasn't in real estate, a career that I had a, a job, a, a career that I have a passion for, I see so many other opportunities, ventures and side hustles I could start right now that I could be earning six figures on within three to 36 to 45 months. No problem. They're out there. And I have young clients that are doing it all, all the time. Be wary of the herd. Well, yeah, again, pretty straightforward. A lot of people are in that, that misery, that cocoon of misery that I talk about. It's not me. You know, woe is me. They, they get into these groups that, you know, all kind of feed off each other. That it's the foreign buyers, it's the government, it's the money launderers, it's the empty homes. They always have an excuse, this herd. You need to break away from that herd, take control of your own actions. It can be done. Stay positive. Review the landscape, get into uh, improving yourself and getting better. That's what I've always tried to do. Just get a little better every day. If you can do that, success is, your, is, is unlimited. Laziness will kill you. Yeah. Again, if you want to cut it in a city like Vancouver or Los Angeles or London or New York, you know, you're, you're going to have to, my young people and my young realtors that I'm mentoring, of course, they're in real estate, you're going to have to work weekends. I still work weekends because I enjoy it, but geez, when I was starting out, I was working seven days a week for months and months on end. I'm a big believer though in taking breaks. Don't get burnt out. You can't do that forever. Nothing wrong with taking a weekend off. I just took uh, a weekend off last weekend. It was very enjoyable. Nice weather, hung out at the pool, got a little sun, had a few drinks. It was great. I always make sure that I do that, but I've earned it. I'm at a stage now where I could take the next three months off, not work any work at all and still be totally fine financially. I've already sold 28 or 30 homes already this year, and we're not even halfway through the year yet. But for you starting out, hey, you're going to have to work weekends. You're going to have to put the time. But if you get into the right businesses, you have a passion for side hustles or whatever you're doing, it shouldn't seem like work. You should be getting up for that. A few more here. Uh, growth requires pain. Yeah, I agree. Again, you're going to, on your journey to success, you're going to get lots of setbacks. I mean, in my business, I'm getting, you know, rejections and setbacks every single week, every single week. You know, if you're not failing, you're probably not trying hard enough. You know, as Mario Andretti said, you know, if, if you're, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're in control in the race car, you're probably driving too slow. You know, you want to, you know, it, it's going to be some setbacks. There's going to be some pain along that road. Uh, comfort is a drug. Yeah, again, I've talked about this in passing before, getting out of your comfort zone. Try and get into situations where you're uncomfortable. I did that all the time when I was a, a, an up and coming realtor. You know, many times I was going into situations at the time dealing with clients or listing homes, very high-end homes, and I thought to myself, hey, I'm out of my league maybe with this. I'm going to be competing against realtors that have a lot more experience than I did. Some of them I lost. It's surprising how many I won. You go in confident, you know, fail, your, you know, fail yourself to success. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, and I, I talk about this too. For me now, a lot of that is in my training and my working out. You know, I have a, a, a trainer 
And, and you know, a lot of people ask, why do you have a trainer? I mean, you're a, you know, a professional fitness model and, a, and, a, uh, and a, an award-winning bodybuilder. You must know a lot about training. What do you need a trainer for? Well, the reason I need a trainer is to take me into what I call the dark waters or take me into deep waters. And it's something that, and I don't do this every workout, but once a week, I like to be pushed to a level that I would not be able to attain uh, on my own, uh, cardiovascular wise, training wise. And that's what my trainer does for me. But it's not a comfortable place to be. It's not enjoyable. At the end of the workout, you're glad you did it. But you know, you need to get comfortable with that. And you do. You know, I used to dread it at first. Now I kind of look forward to it uh, <laughs> during the this these interval training that I do this what we call high intensity training is not a comfortable feeling when you're short on breath and you're having a hard time catching your breath sometimes and the pain but you see yourself through it and that's how you make the gains uh, learn from the failures of others well not a lot of fun to do but you can learn a lot from the failures of others I've done many blogs over the years here on what not to do I think you guys have seen a lot of those. I just did one not long ago on that rental trap. You know, I did one on that guy who was all over Twitter because the government wouldn't come in. He was expecting them to help him buy a house and they didn't and he was gutted by it. You know, you don't want to be like these people. So every now and again I do those blogs. It's not fun learning from other people's failures or mistakes, but you can learn from it. Better learn from them than you doing it yourself and learn and, and then avoiding it. Uh, money is not evil. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I've talked about it with one of the catalysts from my book, that guy in Kitsilano, the baggage handler that sold his house for $3 million, paid two eighty dollars for it. The author of, of that article in the Globe and Mail thought he was... You know, he should never have made that kind of money. Uh, it was obscene and, you know, nobody should make $3 million on a detached house. I disagree. You know, this guy put a lot of, uh, uh, you know, when he bought that house for 280000 they all told him he was crazy. You know, saved, got the down payment, fixed up the house, put a rental suite in, paid the taxes, paid the maintenance fees on the house every year. It wasn't an easy ride but hung on to it for 35 years and then was able to cash out. He was entitled to every penny that he made on that. And you know what? You guys can too, because you could buy a detached house right now, or you could buy a duplex and build a laneway house or build a coach house. Scrimp, save, get in, do whatever you have to do, hang on to it for 30 years, and you're going to cash out for six or $7 million 30 years from now. And you can do the exact same thing that guy did. Pay yourself first, pretty straightforward. Try and save, the more you save, the, the quicker you're gonna accelerate your success. But I think most, most young people under the age of 35 should be trying to save at least 15 to 20%. Anything more than that, you know, I've done many blogs on the fire movement and everything else. Rather than trying to save, you know, 40 and 50%, if you wanna do that, nothing wrong with that. The only thing is, I've often said, it doesn't sound like much fun saving half of what you earn. Unless you're earning six or 700 grand a year, then sure, save 40 or 50%. But if you're earning you know, 80,000 or 70,000 a year and saving half, well, that's not a lot to live on. You can do it, but you're living on pork and beans and you know, you're, you're, uh, you're not taking vacations. I'm a big believer in rewarding yourself. I've talked about that guy, I've told him, go ahead, buy the sports car, you deserve it. He already had a, a principal residence and a handle on his retirement. Uh, you know, treat yourself to that vacation. Treat yourself to that pair, of, nice pair of running shoes or that new suit. Those are little rewards to keep you know the fire on your ass and keep you moving forward. But those are just you got a few others in here too. But I'll cut it off at there. These are just really basic things. Again, that this special forces guy is telling his kids. He's also got them on a pretty good training regiment as well which is good. He's, he's instilling them in them the discipline. You know, that's why, you know, I often find that, you know, people that have, have been in a athletics uh, often make very good investors. Uh, they're able to stay the course because they understand the process. You know, if you want to get good at in track and field or shot put or hockey or football, it's not going to come overnight. It's a process that's going to take many, many years to develop. It's the same thing if you want to buy a house or save for retirement or retirement early. You're not going to see the results very quickly, but 
the secret is just try and get a little bit better every day and take it day by day and you'll be surprised at how quickly you know those you start to get ahead but it takes time you got to set the game plan and again i always throw this in you got to stay optimistic and you need to get away from negative people that are throwing all this stuff at you in the media that the housing real estate's in a bubble the stock market's in a bubble we're all doomed those is it's never going to end folks i've been in this business 35 years it never ends the, there's another boogeyman around the corner tune it all out work on yourself focus on the things you have control over like this guy is telling his kids i'm Owen big one as always thanks for watching thanks to all my new subscribers i'll see you next week